The next step in our study of three-dimensional figures when it comes to surface area and volume is to look at areas of volumes of, and volumes of similar solids. Now let's begin with the definition. Similar solids are solid objects that have the same shape and all of their corresponding dimensions are proportional. Now the ratio of the corresponding linear dimensions is called the scale factor. So pictured here, we have a set, two sets of similar figures. And what we need to know is, are these objects proportional? Are they similar solids? Now, you can see at first glance that they do have the same basic shape. On the left, we have a rectangular prism, and then it appears to have a larger version. The question is, are these actually similar? Do they carry that correspondence of a similar proportion from one part to the next? So what we need to do is match them up. So I'm circling matching dimensions. So we have a 3 to 6, another 3 to 6, and then a 2 to 4. And the question is, does each corresponding set simplify to the same fraction? Well, 3 6 is simply 1 half, and so is the other 3 6. And 2 fourths is also 1 half, so yes, these are similar. Let's take a look at our next set. Again, we're going to be matching up proportion or corresponding parts. So we have 2 to 3. We have here another 2 to 3. So those are both simplified and match. And then we look and we have a 3 to 6. Now 2 to 3 and 2 to 3 are again just 2 thirds. 3 to 6 is 1 half. Since this one is different, no, these do not make similar solids. One of them is disproportionately larger in a dimension than the others would be. So once we know that we have similar solids, what can we do with them? The ideas that we had with objects back when we were talking about two-dimensional, talking about uh, perimeter or circumference to area, we can apply a theorem to areas and volumes of similar solids. So theorem 1112 tells us if the scale factors of two similar solids is a to b, then first the ratio of their corresponding areas is a squared to b squared, and second the ratio of their volumes is a cubed to b cubed. Now when we talk about the corresponding areas, we could be talking about a single surface or we could project it out to talking about all surface area of that object. So as we work, we have to first find out are they similar and what is the scale factor and then work out from there. So here, again, I have two similar looking objects. The question is, are they actually similar? So I'm going to take the first one and compare it to the second. I'm going to say 6 to 5. Is that the same thing as 12 to 10? And both of them reduce down to 6 fifths, so yes, these are similar. Now, what would be the volume of this next one, uh, of the first shape? So volume of the larger is going to be pi r squared h. So we have pi times 36 times 12, which will give us 432 pi units cubed. So that's the volume of the larger one. The smaller one, all we have to do is take this and project it up based on the scale factor. Since our basic ratio was 6 to 5, that means that the area ratio is going to be 36 to 25, and our volume will be 216 to 125. A to B, A squared to B squared, A cubed to C cubed, respectively. So, without having to do the extra computations, if I want to know what the volume of the smaller one was, I could sim simply say that 432 pi over the smaller volume is equal to 216 out of 125. And then solve this proportion. And when we do, we come out with the volume 
of the smaller figure being approximately 250 pi units cubed. So we should be able to interchange between any sets that we see simply by calculating the volume of one and then knowing that scale factor relationship that exists between them. Or better, if we're told that things are similar to begin with, we can move out from there. So let's take a look at this for a few other objects. First, find the scale factor in size. For the first pair of objects, we have a volume of 729 centimeters cubed and 1331 centimeters cubed. Now, if this is the volume, this equals a cubed to b cubed, I want to know what the ratio of a to b is. Well, in order to get rid of that cube, I simply take the cubed root of each portion, and what it would give me is the breakdown of this. So what number times itself three times is 729? Well, that is 9. The what times itself three times is 1331, and that is 11. So the ratio of these is 9 to 11. So if I, I then want to use this for the area ratio, it will be 81 to 121, and we could make adjustments accordingly. Next, often when we go shopping for items, they offer them in different sizes, and you want to be able to buy what's best for your money without wasting and getting too much. So the lateral areas of two similar paint cans, as you see here, are 1,019 square centimeters and 425 square centimeters. And the volume of the smaller one is 1157 cubic centimeters. And we want to find the volume of the larger one. Well, in order to do this, we have to break down our systems into their basic ideas. So, we know that the basic ratio that we're given is a squared to b squared. And that is... 1019 to 425. Now if I want to know A to B, I simply take the square root of each. So I have a square root of 1019 divided by the square root of 425. Now in order to get to my volume, I then set up a proportion with this. So I have volume of the larger one compared to the volume of the smaller one, would have to equal the same proportion being cubed. So we have the square root of 1,019 cubed divided by the square root of 425 cubed. And using our cross products and simplifying, we come out with the volume of the larger one being approximately equal to 4,295 and a half cubic centimeters. So, start with the dimensions you have, backtrack through roots to the original dimensions, and then bring that forward through your proportional reasoning, your products of means and extremes, in order to find the missing dimension of the other. Now, how can we apply this to another factor? In the 1930s in my hometown, a dairy was very popular, and they decided to make a set, set of shops that were in the shape of a milk bottle. That way you could come and see, as you approach the building, you would know exactly what was being sold inside of it. Now the one pictured here is on the National Historic Registry of Locations and is currently being used as an ice cream shop. But if a normal milk bottle has a height of 10 inches and a corresponding volume of 34 ounces of milk and this milk bottle that is shown in the diagram 
has a height of 40 feet, if these are proportionate, if they're similar milk bottles, what would be the theoretical capacity of milk to be contained inside of this restaurant? Well, in order to do this, we're going to have to simply figure it out into this proportionate reasoning. So we start out with our A to B ratio, which is 10 inches, gives us, if we convert 40 feet into inches, we get 480 inches. Next, we need to project this up to volume. So our A cubed to B cubed would be 10 cubed over 480 cubed would have to equal 34 to an unknown volume of milk. Now going through and multiplying these, we would come up with 1,000, which is 10 cubed, times x, that's the product of our extremes, equal to 34 times... 11 0592000 cubic feet or cubic inches inside of the milk bottle multiplying that by 34 and then dividing by 1000 we would come up with the restaurant or the ice cream shop having a capacity of 3,760,128 fluid ounces of milk. Now just to give a comparison, a gallon is 128 fluid ounces, so that's about 20, over 29,000 gallons of milk. So we can apply this as we look out into the world of different objects. Um, I've seen houses built and then the people make a similar house for a birdhouse to be put out front and then you could compare the volumes of the two objects. So this is a continuation of what we learned for two-dimensional thinking. Make sure you have it ready for three-dimensional as we move on.